We're here at the Southbank Centre for the preview screening of Skins Season 4 and we are not alone. So this what are you hard. expecting for Season 4? Um, a lot of drama. Everything and, everything. Everything and anything. Okay. Hopefully a like a roller coaster ride. Yeah. Yeah. We like a bit of angst. We like angst. Yeah. 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 Before it all kicks off, we sit down for a quick chat with the cast of Skins. <laughs> It's a lot more isolated, yeah, especially exactly. from Pandora. She distances herself a lot. But even in group. I reckon even everyone's ep individually is it's, it's very like yeah, it's very individual. Like last year, you got a feeling that okay, it's the gang, but we're going to focus on this character. But the gang are going to be there or thereabouts. This series is more, you know, they focus on the character and it's more that character personally as opposed to that character in the group. So you'll see where, where the stories take the characters personally. It, it goes, it doesn't, it sort of goes the other way from college life and the, the circle of the skins. And I think there was so much drama that went on last last year. That Repercussions again. That, yeah, they, they, like, they can't all stick together and be friends because there's so much awkwardness between a few, a certain amount of people. Mm. So if it kind of that, that affects it a lot as well. It's, it's better this year because they didn't have to spend all the time, most of the time, um, introducing people because mm. now, hopefully, most of the, well, uh, most of the audience watching it will already know who everyone is, so they don't have to waste time saying, "Yeah, this is what this person's like and this is what yeah. this person's like." It just concentrates more on the people and the relationships among the group, and it's much more like consequential. Like you see what happens if you keep living your life a certain way, and um, also, like I think a lot of the characters in the beginning were quite stereotypical or quite, you know, not really, but kind of a little bit and then this series you get to n see why they're like that rather than just being like oh she's the tart or oh she's the like whatever mm. there's still Freddie Cook and JJ but there's also then there's JJ and Thomas um, then uh, I, 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 the, the I don't think Katie called. ever really was a big part of the group was she I mm. don't think well she's I think this season she's got too much too, too much on her plate to worry about which group she's in like she's got so much stuff with her family going on. Mm. She's not really got time to see them much, I don't think. It starts off really nicely. Um, Freddie and Effie are in love, and it's all very happy and it's all very nice. And um, and then it all gets messed up because of Freddie. No, that's a lie. Because <laughs> it's not Freddie's fault. But like she said, it is. You know, everything's really happy and, and kind of stuff. They're madly in love, um, but it's short-lived, isn't it? Yeah, it's short -lived. <laughs> unfortunately. It's short-lived, unfortunately. It's still, um, he's still cock, but what what where he sort of settles is a really nice sort of midpoint where he's considerate, which you saw with Naomi a lot of the time in series three. There's there's that relationship. You see that sort of, you see that defined, and um, yeah, no, he just finds a very like decent point to settle at, which is still funny, still comedy. Like it's still a decent, but it's just more decent to spend time around as opposed to as opposed to a nuisance. What what do you like about the show? Um, how it portrays teenagers today, but like exaggerates it more. And who's your favourite character? Uh, Naomi, definitely. Yeah, so who you here to see today? Yeah, Lily Loveless. It's basically like at the end of the last series there, and um, you see them kind of skipping off happily, and then you assume that they've had like a happy summer together, which I think they did, and then you come back to them as kind of a fully fledged couple um, and uh, in this series and then kind of their relationship progresses and like things unfold and stuff and it's just about them being a couple. Um, Katie just gets more adult, grows up, stops being so fake I think. Mm. I think I think JJ get, becomes similarly, similarly to the last series he sort of becomes more a more well-rounded person. Um, I mean in the first uh, in the first series he was um, he was trying to be normal. Now in this series, he's sort of seeing that actually, actually being normal isn't um, isn't all it's cracked up to be. And no one really is. Yeah, no one really is. That's it. She's become a lot more like accepted that she she's fine on her own. She doesn't necessarily need to impress people or be friends or or be funny. She just gets on with everything and has to deal with stuff on her own now. I think, and she's so she's matured in that way. Thomas is um, they say less naive. Like when he first came, he was sort of. Happy to be here. Thinks England is great. This, that, and the other. Whereas this series, he's sort of taking it more into his stride and thinking, okay, this isn't, this isn't what was advertised. This isn't as great as I thought it was going to be. Takes some more realistic stance on the whole situation. Effie's kind of gone from the powerful, mysterious thing she was at the beginning, and now she's just completely messed up and 
and different and uh, kind of in love and hurt and confused and scared and I think she's becoming more of an emotional teenager now. I think she's sort of opened up a lot more. She's not the ice queen anymore. Yeah, Freddie's Freddie's come. Uh, yeah, he's come. I think Freddie's come a lot further in terms of his 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 kind of approach towards things. I mean, in series three, you just saw Freddie kind of sit back and just do whatever. But now he feels, you know, now he's got what he wants and what he's always wanted, you know, which is which is Effie and Cook to kind of just sit back and let things happen. He feels he can just express his feelings a bit more and talk about, you know, he won't just let things happen. For instance, he'll just kind of say, you know, listen, this is wrong. We'll sort this out. Let's do this or that and the other. So, I I, I was really um, impressed with Cook. Uh, like his attitude towards it because you can get all bitter and get a little bit pathetic with it all can't you you can sort of lose your um, inhibition with it all so uh, yeah no he's he's quite admirable the way he goes about it in my opinion I hope you feel the same otherwise I've completely misplayed it but um, yeah he doesn't he's, he's more he's more respectful he's learnt lessons from before then which he was referring to there on the boat episode 10 so there's there's all that. What was really cool for me though is is this guy's journey for two years. So like with most film, you've only got like a set amount of time to play a character for. Like that 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 varies obviously, but but with with cooking the rest of the characters, we was able to develop the whole of the the years. Just as I was myself, like 19 started when we were 17, or me personally did. So like like myself, I was growing up. I was also playing this guy, going through similar so so yeah no that's that's uh yeah the maturity anyway the matu like you, you get if if you can play that anyway if you can take note of it it's just beneficial to learn from really